Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is if you have your sun in Gemini and Scorpio rising. I would call this false advertising for sure because your rising sign is what people see, kind of like your calling card, if you will. And I recently read somewhere where they described it as how you behave in social situations, which makes a lot of sense to me because even if, um, you know, I've, I, I've read before uh, them talk about how your rising sign is the first impression you make and then somebody gets to know you better and then they realize that your sun sign is really uh, who you are, at least in this lifetime, you know, but then I read something else that was talking about how you behave in social situations. And I think that's a better way of putting it because even if you act a certain way with your close friends, if you are in a bigger group of people, then you may kind of revert to that rising sign. One reason this can be is because it's kind of mimicking your family of origin. That's, I always go back to that when I think of the rising sign. I think of it as kind of a coping mechanism from um, the kind of family that the person was born into. Now, this is based on other things that I have read and me putting my two cents into it and kind of coming up with that. And I feel that as we get older, we grow into our sun signs. And part of this is because the sun represents the individuated self. You as, a, as an individual apart from other people. You know, your moon sign is your, these are your emotional reactions. But a lot of times those things are, are kind of being um, also influenced by other people's behavior towards you. So uh, the sun is really something where you can kind of stand in your own sense of self. And uh, the rising sign is the cusp of the first house, which is the, um, the beginning of the chart. And so if you think about the baby, if you think about the 12th house as the womb, and the baby comes into that first house to start a new journey in life, what is the first thing they encounter? And the, the, the rising sign influence can really set the stage for explaining the type of um, first impressions that the, the newborn has at a deep level about what this world is all about. Well, what is that? How does that boil down? Um, when your rising sign is Scorpio. What it can mean is that the person's coming to coming into a very intense environment. There, there's so many um, possibilities. I tend to, I tend to go into the more uh, challenging uh, possibilities. Uh, like for instance, perhaps the person comes into this environment that's a very heavy emotional situation. Maybe the parents aren't getting along. Maybe the mother is a single mother and she's bitter that she is in this position because the, the, her partner is not in the picture. Maybe um, there's some kind of deep, dark secret that's going on in this family of origin that is maybe ancestral karma or whatever that's kind of like haunting them. And um, maybe it's traumatic. There's some kind of um, heavy negativity that is permeating this family. Um, and this baby is coming into this world and having to be um, exposed to that. And when and another thing that I uh, have decided, and this is based on you know my own uh, chart having an in conjunction in my case, but this is oh yeah you know actually this is also an in conjunction Gemini and Scorpio. 
So an inconjunction is 150 degrees apart and it's a very awkward angle and it can mean that these two signs and the planets or points that represent them have nothing in common. And, you know, <laughs> I have, I have um, shown in prior videos that I do not believe that theory. I believe there's always some kind of common ground or usually, but I have to confess, I can't think of any common ground between Gemini and Scorpio uh, offhand. I think that, well, you know, one reason they talk about with in conjunctions is that the elements are very disparate, meaning that they are very, very different and hard to um, integrate. So with Gemini, we're talking about air and with Scorpio, we're talking about water. Air is detached, water is um, emotional. Gemini is ruled by Mercury, so it is, you know, that enhances that mental uh, angle of the air signs, and Scorpio is ruled by Mars and Pluto. It doesn't get any more, um, you know, I was going to say treacherous than that. I mean, difficult, maybe we can say. And Mercury kind of sometimes um, I would say, or, or you could just say the sign of Gemini, can sometimes glide on the surface of life, um, being very glib, being very, um, I, I always like, um, a lot of times when I create thumbnails for um, Gemini videos that I do, I a lot of times I will use fairies because I do see that energy of Gemini as a fairy, kind of like flitting around, um, you know, reminding us of summer, mid, you know, midsummer night's dream type of a vibe because, you know, the time of the year that Gemini represents goes right up until the solstice and that kind of feel of the lightness uh, that is occurring at that time. And what is Scorpio? Late autumn, going into the winter season when it's dark, you know, when there's hardly any sun. So it's it's such a study in contrast. So what does that mean? Uh, oh, oh, and I wanted to say in terms of um, the family of origin is that if you have a very, this is my theory, if you have a very incompatible or different sun and rising sign, that you may have been the black sheep of the family. You may have been somebody who just didn't fit in with the rest of the crew. And the rising sign will be your attempt to fit into that. Now, in this particular case, I think that what is more likely um, is that the person with this combination, they are going to they are going to see that their family is um, not thinking properly and look to your moon sign, look to your inner planets. So a Gemini person, let's say could have Mars and Aries or, uh, Mars and Leo or Mercury in, um, I was trying to think of like Mercury. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if, I don't think the Mercury sign, because that's very close to Gemini. But I'm thinking of something that's very inspirational. And the fire energy can be very positive. So like that Aries energy in particular can be, um, the moon can be in any sign. Maybe you have the moon in Sag or something like that. And you're very philosophical. You're very committed to expansion. And if you have um, been raised in an environment that is very secretive, that is not the uh, vibe of a Gemini person. And so it's almost like a vestige of something that you want to release later on. And 
and it's almost like shaking it from you in a sense. Because there may be this thing where you uh, realize that you have the ability, this time in your life, that you can create your own reality, that you can create the life that you want, that you're not doomed to stay stuck in this uh, situation that feels like it's never going to change. Because Scorpio is a fixed water sign. Water energy is very receptive, but it can tend to be prejudiced. Not just talking about race. We always assume prejudice means means that somebody is uh, racist. It can be um, prejudging any person, place, or thing. And the point being that being able to understand that you have the ability to, to shift, which is very um, much what Gemini individuals love. They love change. You love change. You're a mutable air sign. You rule by Mercury, which, you know, if you know the word mercurial, that's changeable. And change, uh, sometimes, you know, we can make the argument that Gemini's can be too changeable, that they are not constant enough. If you have inner planets in Taurus, this will tend to anchor you a little bit more and make you less flighty. So if you have Mars in Taurus, you may do things more consistently than somebody who also has Mars in Gemini. Um, so not to say that Gemini is perfect in all regards, but, um, I do feel that Gemini people believe that they can change. And so if you have come from an environment that was more on the negative side with the Scorpio rising, not to say that Scorpio people have to be negative, but I feel that with the rising sign, that this is something that you had to go through in order to um, maybe learn certain lessons on perhaps how not to be in some cases. But it's not the ultimate um, destination for somebody, what their rising sign represents. And in terms of how this can play out, personally, when you're younger, you may be more reserved. You may be more like the Scorpio until your first Saturn return, and then you may get uh, looser, more gregarious, more talkative and sharing and open, and less closed in. So this is another thing, because Scorpio rules the eighth house, and that can be associated with crisis and trauma and things like that. So if you came into a world where you experience that, when you get away from that, which, um, you know, usually comes around the age of 18 or thereabouts when you're a legal adult, then as you get older and further away from that influence, you will start to probably lighten up. And um, because Gemini is a very clever sign, it's a sign that is very... Um, it can be quite humorous and extremely intelligent, extremely um, good with analysis and linguistically talented, you know, a great writer. This would be a great, you know, in terms of professions, this could be the great um, fiction writer or memoir writer where you talk about some of those things that you know, happened when you were a kid. I haven't read that uh, book. I just, for some reason, it popped into my head called Running With Scissors. I don't, the guy's name was, I don't know, August something, uh, Burroughs or something. And those kinds of things, I don't even know if he was associated with a famous family or anything like that. But you don't even have to be because if you have a dramatic story that can 
you know, be enough to hold people's interest. You don't have to be, you know, connected to anybody famous. But even if you wrote fiction, um, anybody who has water in their personal planets tends to have a, a very um, strong creative um, streak in them. And I also think that they probably have a good memory too, a photographic memory. And that really, the, the water element is very good for um, creating, um, you know, generating emotions. I was thinking of like somebody like um, George Harrison. George Harrison was a Pisces. He wasn't a Scorpio. But he had the moon in Scorpio. And, you know, when you think of his music, there was always this tinge of sadness. Now that could also be the Pisces, but that kind of like, he did have a very kind of an intense, um, attitude towards life. You know, he was not a frivolous, lighthearted person, even though I think he had the Libra rising. Um, he did have that side to himself that was always like probing the secrets of the universe. So I feel that, um, you definitely give off that vibe. You may even dress like I was saying, <laughs> oh God, what a, when I always try to tell people the thoughts that are going on in my head, it's kind of funny. Morticia Adams, is that her last name, Adams? But, you know, dressing up like, um, very goth and, uh, that kind of thing, um, dark clothing, even if you're a blonde dyeing your hair black and, uh, wanting, you know, it, you might look like Gwyneth Paltrow and have very fair skin and very blonde hair and just wish you could look like Morticia Adams or whatever her name is. And, um, But as you get older, you know, somebody who is like that, maybe you go through that goth period when you're a teenager in your 20s, black lipstick, and then you kind of lighten up and it shows in the way that you dress and the way you carry yourself. Everything becomes lighter, like the Gemini. That You know, when you're younger, you may be, have more trust issues and be more wary of people. That's what the Scorpio is. But remember, too, that trauma can make people not trust. Not just this idea. It can be also from being raised by a family that is full of shame and secrets. You know, there's that saying, you're only as sick as your secrets. And that, that when people are carrying around a lot of secrets from their past, they tend to... Um, I, I think it tends to come from shame. Um, you can't shut Gemini's up, but when they have Scorpio rising, you know, they can shut themselves up because they're not, they, they might be very mum, but again, I think that they, they, um, they start to come out of that uh, weary mode um, later on, maybe start loosening up a bit. I was thinking of that saying, loose lips sink ships. And that's, that's, uh, that could be the motto that you have in the back of your mind that you always have to watch your back, watch your mouth, watch what you're saying, because you were programmed into that. And then you get out of that and you're much more, you're like liberated from that. So it is going to be it could be kind of a radical shift that you make at some point in your life. And, um, and I, and I think too, that that can lead to a change in a person's, uh, outlook on life too. Look at your Mercury sign. Of course, Gemini is ruled by Mercury, but your Mercury, uh, if it's in cancer, then it could be more aligned with the Scorpio energy and be more self-protective. Um, 
and be less open, like an open book, like a Gemini would normally be. But there's something sometimes cynical about Scorpios because, um, and it's not just because they uh, have been through the mill. It's also because they know human nature. They're very astute at kind of nailing down human nature. And they know that a lot of times people are full of shit, that they really are underneath the surface. They are doing things that they claim that they're not, that they're hypocritical, that they're trying to um, present themselves in the most ideal way, but it's not really who they are, that they're hiding some stuff. Or if there's like kind of an overdeveloped paranoia, which certainly can happen with Scorpio, they can just assume that everybody is hiding uh, certain things about themselves. Um, by the way, this would really make you a great psychologist in a lot of ways, because in order to be a good psych um, therapist and things like that, you have to have a certain level of subject, uh, I mean, not subjectivity, uh, objectivity, plus you have to be able to um, have that emotional distance. It's very easy to burn out in those types of professions because, um, you know, just like anything, like even, you know, being an astrologer or a tarot reader or whatever, um, you're really an empath. Even a psychologist is an empath if they're doing it right. And um, it can be draining to deal with other people's problems, okay? So a Gemini sun sign... Again, look to the moon sign. If it's an earth and air, then it's really going to in the, enhance what I'm saying. Um, it can really make the person more detached, and that can make it also better to be able to analyze and be objective. Because the reason people are subjective and they impose too much of their own stuff and project it onto other people is because they get so involved emotionally with everything. They're like empathic to the nth degree. So um, this could be very good for that, but also those analytical skills could be quite um, helpful when it comes to, you know, being able to really get to the root cause of other people's problems and being able to kind of see how people, you know, know how people uh, tick, what makes them tick. In terms of love, um, this is a very interesting one because Gemini is quicksilver. You know, that's what Mercury is. And it's very hard to uh, hold on to a, score, uh, a Gemini person. You tend to be very detached and you love variety and it might be hard for you to settle on one person. You might like to have two relationships going at the same time. Gemini is a double sign as all the mutable signs are. So the, the Gemini is the twins and you might like to have twins, <laughs> the double mint twins. Um, no, but you know, you just might be indecisive. I like this person. I like this person. Who, who should I be with? And those kinds of things can make it hard for you to stick to one person. But if you do find one person, the, the other issue that comes about is, do you want somebody who is emotionally demanding or somebody who kind of gives you more breathing room? The, the thing that is difficult here is that your rising sign may attract certain people towards you because you're acting like that. You might be acting like a Scorpio and you may be acting more intense than you actually are. This sometimes also comes out with the moon sign positions. If somebody, and if you, this is the same thing, uh, Gemini, if you have a moon in water, you may blow hot and cold where sometimes you're very involved and intense and other times you can't be bothered. 
or you get scared at that other person's demanding nature and you kind of make it a quick exit. Maybe you ghost them or you just, you know, don't answer the phone or whatever and just kind of avoid them for a while. So there might be a little bit of contradictory behavior, but that would be nothing new for a Gemini person. The trick is to make sure that you are compatible um, in multiple ways with the person that you're with, including intellectual compatibility, because you can be extremely intelligent and want to share your uh, life with somebody verbally and be with somebody who's very clo closed mouthed. <laughs> That's how you say it. And tight lipped. A man or a woman of few words, and that could be disastrous. You know, people, they know whether they're physically attracted to somebody, they know whether or not they share interests with somebody, but they don't, all, you know, always know if they are um, compatible, you know, when it comes to the intellect. And actually, sharing interests can give you that um, information because some, you know, people who are intellectual, they tend to, they, maybe they like literature and certainly Gemini people may be bookworms and they like to talk about the latest book they've read, or they love to go to, uh, museums or, you know, they'd love to stimulate their mind in various ways. And I'm not even talking about somebody who has advanced degrees. That's an important point to make. A person could have a, D, a, a GED and be um, very well-read and knowledgeable about a lot of subjects. I live with a person like this, so don't think that I'm talking anything about that. There are people who have college degrees and never crack open a book, and they, and they watch sports all the time, and nothing wrong with, you know, sports, but if you're somebody who's in, not into that and you're with somebody who's like, they, their life is totally built around, okay, now it's football season, now it's <laughs> hockey season, now, now we're going to go into the basketball. It's just like one after the other. Uh, it's like, I was just, um, the other day I was just like, you know, the train went by, you know, Wrigley Field, and I was like, oh, are the Cubs still playing? You know, it's like, it's October. They're, yeah, I guess they are still playing. I, I, I don't know. The, the season has ended? Maybe it has. Maybe they're in playoffs. I have no clue. And I'm happy. I'm blissfully happy that I have no clue. So um, anyway, um, relationships are something where you have to um, look at the people that you're attracting and decide whether or not that's really the kind of person that you do vibe with because you might have some kind of like um, inconsistencies in how you carry yourself and how you really how you really feel about yourself and what you want from life and you you know ultimately when we're looking for a partner we're looking for a companion in life. And that means that we have to look at the bigger picture in that sense. So um, anyway, and, and one last thing I wanted to say is that Roseanne Barr ha has the sun in Scorpio and the moon in Gemini. So this is not the, uh, you know, obviously this is not what we're talking about with you, but all of these like personal uh, planets and personal points, regardless of what is the juxtaposition they are going to you know if you compare if you have two of these elements there are going to be certain common things and she's like one of my favorite comedians because she really draws upon life and she's very witty very perceptive and it's just like very irreverent and that's the kind of thing and that's scorpio too scorpio is very rebellious probably from that mars energy that, that, you know, is the ruler of Aries, a fire sign. So that can be kind of a fiery warrior-like 
element that's like fighting against things. And I think that's what separates um, Scorpio from the rest of the water signs in that regard, is that there's a little bit of a rebellious energy in Scorpio that kind of goes against that, what we think about when we think of water, of that dreaminess and that compassion, but kind of in a soft way, in a, in a very gentle way. There's a, there's kind of a ferocity with Scorpio, but you know, the fact that you have the sun in Gemini can really help you to weather any kind of trauma that occurred when you were younger, because you can always have a good sense of humor. You can always have that detachment that can ultimately make you not uh, stuck in the past and feel like you can never change. Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.